In this video, we're going to talk about applications of periodic functions. We'll be looking at their graphs and equations. Whenever we're solving a problem involving periodic functions, we're frequently being asked to graph the situation as well as determine the equation that models the situation. So it's, let's look at the general equation of a periodic function given the transformations. So say we have f of x is equal to a sine or could be cosine k x minus d plus c. a is the amplitude. Amplitude is a distance from the axis of the curve to the top or the bottom point of the graph, the maximum or the minimum. Amplitude is also responsible for reflection. If it's negative, the graph is reflected in the x-axis or over the axis of the curve. K determines the period. And in order to find K, you need to divide 360 by the period. And in order to find the period, you divide 360 by k, provided your functions are sine or cosine, because standard period for sine and cosine functions is 360 degrees. If it's a tangent function, which we don't normally use for applications, the period will be 180. All right, d is a phase shift horizontally. So the phase shift can be to the right or to the left. And it is determined based on the original graph. For a sine function, the non-shifted function graph starts at zero axis. So it has to be a point on the axis of the curve when x is zero. Then for cosine, the relationship is zero maximum point when there is no shift. C is a vertical shift. And it determines the axis of the curve, AOC. The equation of the axis of the curve is y equals c. A Ferris wheel makes a complete rotation every 30 minutes. The height of the Ferris wheel is 80 meters. The rider gets on from the platform one meter above the ground, create a graph and an equation for this situation. We have a relationship between time and height. So let's try to graph it. I don't need a negative y-axis because everything is happening above the ground. So the position of the graph will be above the x-axis. The x-axis now represents time. Time is 30 minutes for one period. So if I'm graphing only one period of this function, the last point that I'll have will be 30. Then every time I graph a periodic function, I need to split the period into four equal parts, four equal quadrants around the circle. So then here I will have 15 minutes, here I'll have seven and a half minutes, and here I will have 22 and a half minutes. Next, the height, the lowest point on the Ferris wheel is one meter above the ground. The highest point on the Ferris wheel is 80 meters above the ground. The diameter of a Ferris wheel is 79 meters. 79 divided by two will de determine the amplitude. The radius of the Ferris wheel is always the amplitude. So in this case, 
the amplitude will be 39.5 meters. The axis of the curve is located in the middle between the lowest and the highest point. So in order to find it, we add the minimum and the maximum and divide by two. 80 plus one is 81, divided by two is 40.5. So this point here where the center of the wheel is located is 40.5. We know that the rider gets on at the bottom one meter above the ground. So this at zero time, the lowest height is one meter. Then goes back to the same position after 30 minutes at one meter. The rider reaches the highest point halfway through 15 minutes. And then in between the rider is at the center of the wheel. So the graph will go like this, like this, like this, and like that. It is convenient for me to express this um, model in terms of a cosine function, because cosine normally starts at zero maximum, and all I have to do here is reflect it so it will still be starting at zero, but it will be at minimum. There is no phase shift, just a reflection. So then height at a given time of this Ferris wheel will be negative amplitude 39.5, which is the radius of the Ferris wheel, uh, cosine times K value. K value is determined by dividing the standard period by the given period. 360 divided by 30, and it equals 12. So then K value is 12. There is no phase shift, so it's just 12 T, and there is a vertical shift, and the axis of the curve is at 40.5 plus 40.5. If I did want to express this same model in terms of sine function, there would be no reflection, but there would be a phase shift. Normally, a sine function would go like this, zero axis of the curve. But now it's shifted and it goes here. So the shift, the horizontal shift is seven and a half minutes. So then sine, 12 t minus seven and a half plus 40.5. Let's look at another problem. Outside temperature over one day can be modeled by a sine function. The high temperature is 24 degrees and the low temperature is 10 degrees. The low temperature occurs at 4 a.m. in the morning. Create the graph and equation since midnight. So the midnight is zero. We know that the complete uh, period is 24 hours. Then half a period will be 12 hours, quarter will be six hours, and three quarters of a period will be 18 hours. The lowest temperature is 10 degrees. The highest temperature is 24 degrees. The lowest temperature occurs at 4 a.m. in the morning. So if 4 a.m. is approximately here, this is where the lowest temperature will be. The time period between the lowest point and the highest point is always half a period. Half a period is 12 hours. So four plus 12 is 16. At 16 hours, which is 4 p.m., the temperature will be at its maximum. Now we want to know where the temperature will be uh, at the axis of the curve. So the axis of the curve is right in the middle between the two values, 10 and 24. 10 plus 24, which is 34, divided by 2 is going to give us 17. So the axis of the curve is at 17 degrees. That temperature occurs again at another quarter of a period. So at 
10 o'clock in the morning and then again at 8 p.m. in the evening or 20 hours. So then if I connect what I know here, this is what the graph will look like. Then we can see that there is a portion missing. The problem asks us to graph the graph from midnight, but we don't know what the y-intercept is. We don't know what the temperature is at midnight. So we'll have to create the equation based on what we know and determine the y-intercept from the equation. So we have the relationship between the temperature at a given time. We have the minimum and the maximum, so we're able to determine the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the axis of the curve to the max or to the min point. In this case, it's seven. If I want to express this as a sine function, it will be sine, then I need the k value. The k value is determined by dividing the standard period of sine function by the given period, which is 24. 360 divided by 24 is 15. So then the k value is 15. Then we also have a phase shift. The function does not start at the axis of the curve from zero, like normally a sine function would. It's shifted all the way to 10 hours. So then it will have to be t minus 10. So here, the only value left is the axis of the curve, 17. This is the equation of the function uh, that models the following situation. Now let's use this equation to determine what the temperature is when time is zero when the time is at midnight. T of zero is equal to seven sine 15, zero minus 10 plus 17. Evaluate using the order of operations. Brackets first, sign of what you get inside the bracket, then multiply by seven and then add 17 at the end. So temperature when time is zero is 13 and a half degrees. This value here is 13 and a half degrees. Therefore, at 24 hours, it comes back to that same value. And then after 24 hours, it will go back to the lowest temperature at 4 a.m.